so are in studio. You can put your headphones on, please, if you folks don't mind, and uh, slide on up to your microphones as we move back into uh, one of our uh, favorite folks uh, in segments here, Michelle Studdeth from uh, Casa of the Eastern Panhandle and uh, the great work that they do uh, there as well. And uh, also Corinne Bariner is with you today. The Superhero Challenge is uh, one of the big fundraisers of the year for CASA. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Good okay. Morning. So uh, you're on the race committee, Corinne? Yes. Yeah, okay. So tell me about the race and how that fits in with everything that, uh, that we're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. So Freedom's Run is going to start um, 7.30 a.m. The marathon starts Saturday morning, October 7th. Mm -hmm. um, it kicks off in Harper's Ferry, and then the next three races kick off in Shepherdstown, followed by the Kids Run. And the Kids Run is really where we're partnering with CASA. Um, CASA is providing all the volunteers for the Kids Run to direct the kids on the race course. But also, they'll open up, they'll kick off the Kids Run at 11 a.m. They'll share about the mission of CASA and mm -hmm. also the mission and vision of the Superhero Challenge and why it's important. And then during the Kids Run, CASA is really empowering those kids and um, setting them up with capes and masks. So there's this slew of superheroes running through the streets of Shepherdstown. And why that's important is because we're doing a match. So um, for every kid that runs the kids run, we're going to um, automatically count them into the superhero challenge numbers and make sure that that dollar match per mile is automatically counted. And then we're also making sure to promote um, just those who are running the marathon, the half marathon, 5K, 10K, for them to go ahead and register separately too, um, to count those miles into the superhero challenge. What kind of a numbers count are you thinking you're gonna get? Um, well, right now for the kids run, we would pr probably have over a hundred, which is great, but Freedom's Run in total right now has over um, a thousand runners registered which we'll probably have more um, on race day, too. There's a lot that register on race day. Could be a lot of superheroes running through the street, Billy. <laughs> yeah, very much so. You mentioned um, a couple of uh, sites in Jefferson County. Do you have a comparable sites in Berkeley County? Um, for Freedom's Run, you For mean? Freedom's Run, yeah. Um, so Freedom's Run is mainly in Jefferson okay. County, but I know Michelle could probably share the Apple Trample is going to be um, partnering as well with the Superhero Challenge as well as um, a site in Morgan County. Morgan County, County Correct. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's just terrific uh, for all of these other entities who organize their own races and run runs to say, hey, let's partner up with CASA, and for everyone who participates in our runs that we organize, we could count their miles to CASA Superhero. So it's just a great partnership with uh, a number of community organizations and organizers of run, including Freedom's Run. So we're happy that you know uh, the shutdown didn't hold you back and there was no shutdown to change your route. So um, we're too. excited to partner, <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you get some good weather. Yes, we hope so too. All right, that's a that's a key component. Will it, will they run rain or shine? Absolutely. All right, very good. How now, much money are you open to raise? I'm sorry. Excuse me, Rob. I did not mean to interrupt. Oh. It's okay. Okay, Corinne, are you with Casa per se? No, you're so with, I, you're I'm with Freedom Runs. Freedom yes. Runs. Okay, that's where the confusion was. So, uh, so you're not with Casa. So there's a partnership between the two groups that the kids will benefit from. Yes. Okay, yeah. Michelle, good morning to you, by the way. Thanks for good coming morning. in. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, how much are you folks hoping to raise this weekend? Um, so we're the Superhero Run runs through the whole month of October. So this was kind of an interesting thing that we organized over COVID where we're asking people to run virtually so mm -hmm. they can run at their own time wherever they want in the community and just track their miles. And for every mile, uh, we have a match fund, and every mile is matched a dollar, and our goal is 20000 So. 20,000 miles, $20,000 on our 20th anniversary. I like the way those ring. Yeah. Right. So who, excited. who provides the match money? Um, we have a number of sponsors who's, who've contributed to that, and we're asking people, if you can't run, please donate to our match fund. So um, it's a special fund our sponsors and donors are set up for us. Okay. You know, there's a lot of incentivize miles. A lot of running going on here early in the morning. It seems to me there should be a way to convert donuts and coffee to miles. You know, it's just people who go to watch people as they run. 
that mm-hmm. just you know it's an idea i'll consider it but <laughs> i did uh i did convert we have our co-chair who was supposed to be on the show to today but she uh has an injury so i am converting scooters scooter miles okay. to dollars but the donuts oh. well the donut will go with the scooter it, yeah not so much with the runner <laughs> yeah. yeah okay that's if you do too much donut and scootering, then you need to be a runner. I, I challenge that. I think donuts go with anything, Rob. Well, Bill, that's your side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Running, scooting, driving, automobile, just provide donuts and life's much better. So let's talk the logistics of this. So if, if I want to, probably will be not a participant. I don't do a lot of running. Um, but so if people who jog every day, they just log their miles or do, right. is there a registration and, fee first for them uh it's 25 dollars, so that's also a fundraiser for us so okay. if you register to participate in the superhero you're paying a 25 dollar registration fee a hundred percent of that goes right to casa so that's a little fundraiser for us you register and you could do anything actually you could walk with a donut and your miles will count okay, okay there you go now you're talking you, could, you could do yoga with a donut <laughs> And you're, uh, we have a translator that says you have an hour of yoga, that's three miles. So really, the idea is you could get active for CASA in whatever way you get active. But the, So now I have a, a diary, essentially, of, of my miles, and then what do I do with it? How do, well, how do we get know, that we're to hoping convert? those active people have a, you know, Apple Watch or some comparable. But yeah, you track your miles any way you'd like. On a notepad, on your notes on your phone, in your GPS tracker. And online, you have to log in to your site, and then you put in, I did five miles this week for CASA. Okay. I did 10 miles. You could go in at the end of the month and say my whole month was 30 miles. And, um, you know, help us get to our goal. I mean, 20,000 is a big goal for us. Our community miles last year was 3,400. So that's why we're here. We're really trying to promote this. Um, it raises awareness for us. It gets people engaged. And um, the idea of the superhero is we're honoring our volunteers. Our volunteers are superheroes every day. And so we're saying to the community, not everybody could be a CASA volunteer, but we could all support the cause. And we could talk to our children, you know, the idea the kids run, about what it means to help kids who are less fortunate than kids participating in the run are. So it's a community builder for us. And let's talk about CASA of the Eastern Panhandle and what you do, Michelle, and why your services are important. Yeah, so uh, we recruit, train, and support community volunteers. We have about 70 now who are paired with kids in open abuse and neglect cases. So those volunteers stay with that child from the beginning of the case to the end of the case. They're the one constant. Social workers change, their housing changes, their school can change, but their CASA is their constant. Um, We have a lot of staff support that help a lot of the hardest cases. And we also have new programming called Fostering Futures, which helps those kids 13 and over who will age out of foster care without ever finding permanency. And that's a big kind of staff and volunteer effort that we're putting a lot of energy behind right now. What happens to an 18-year-old kid who's involved in the system and then all of a sudden they're an adult? Yeah, outcomes are really bad. Um, They face obstacles of homelessness. Uh, finding living wage employment, uh, not having health insurance. And, um, you know, the sad part of this story is a lot of those resources are out there. The state support, they could sign themselves back in and they can receive health care. West Virginia pays college tuition. Um, There's a whole lot of resources on skill development, workforce development. But, um, you know, kids who turn 18 are a little angry with the system. So it's hard to get them to sign up. It's hard to ha- have them access these resources. And we can't start talking to kids at 18 about college and their future plans. We need to talk to them at 13. Mm-hmm. So that's why CASA is so important in the lives of these young people. We have two kids going off to college this year. So, so at eight, amazing. at 18, uh, they're, they're foster families, uh, they stopped getting uh, assistance from the state. So do some of them try to keep the kids uh, at the age of 18 and continue to help them or do these kids literally at 18 just kind of wander off yeah some do but um you know they're eager to find independence the ones that have been bounced around in multiple foster homes so they don't really have this relationship with a foster parent and i'd say the vast majority of those kids are in congregate care so they're um you know in various places across the state in virginia living in out-of-home Does, does West Virginia need to think seriously about what to do with these kids in the 18 yes. to 21-year-old 
Yes, brain they share. really do. But they need to start at 13. Yeah, so. my, if I could, my son Chris worked um, ages ago with a, with a group called Orphan Foundation of America. I don't think that's its name anymore. <clears throat> but it was a, he. the job was to help kids age out who are aging out of foster care find grants and and such and the the driving depression the, the, the driving difficulty was that these kids are suddenly having to face the real world and they haven't really been parented so you don't have the life skills about how to go to college or how to find grants or the meaning of money you know you you, you get a scholarship but you know you're going to have to pay this thing back and it was um it's it's a problem these kids all of a sudden boom you know the day before your 18th birthday you're a kid the day after your 18th birthday you're an adult and you know without without people like in, in casa helping these kids move along it's just it's a harsh terrible transition Michelle, going back specifically to CASA, uh, there's a couple of questions. One deals with the the need, the other one deals with the resource. First, the need. Uh, you have, you said 70, I think, volunteers. Uh, I've heard recently uh, that there's, uh, uh, you could use, there's 400 kids in the system that need support. Are these numbers approximately correct? There, uh, we're serving close to 400. There yeah. are 800 um, before the courts and active cases right now. And there's hundreds more. Um, even within our 13 and over group, uh, we're getting called on by the judge who, in, you know, kids are in teen court and they're not officially in the system, but they're couch surfing, meaning they don't have a home. They just aren't part of the DCFS system. So uh, by the best measure, DHHR. you're approaching about 50% of the staffing that Correct. you need. Uh, for resources, uh, what is your budget and uh, how much and where does the money come from? Mm -hmm. We are about a $900,000 organization. Um, we've had amazing growth. I mean, over the last five years, we've grown tenfold. So we are serving. Is that Berkeley County, 900,000? It's Berkeley, Morgan, and Jefferson. Okay. And um, we have 10 staff people. So each volunteer is backed with a volunteer supervisor. We, we have found that that is super important because if we make the volunteer's job easier, they feel more supported, they stick around with us, and they're, be, they're able to do more. So um, the staffing is really important to have behind the volunteers. So we need volunteers, we need resources to provide this kind of staffing and support and do the training. There's 35 hours of training that's required to be a volunteer plus ongoing training. Um, and I'd say 50% of our budget comes through grants. Um, another 25% comes from sponsors. Corporate sponsors are really, really important to us. Um, we had a great fundraiser, our 20th anniversary gala. We raised $100,000 that night. I mean, that was huge for this organization. So uh, we're growing our partnerships. And then I'd say the last piece of it comes from individual donors and people get, you know, sending us $25 in the mail to sending us two fifty, dollars And um, it's amazing to get those notes and to get those checks in the mail. So You get money from the United Way, I assume. Uh, yes, we do. We participate in their match um, uh, Unity Cares program where uh, money is matched. So what about fun. the foundation? Um, this year we did not. Uh, I think they're uh, limiting some of their uh, charities that they work with, uh, but we have been past recipients. I know you have to work very closely with DHHR. Uh, do you share resources with DHHR? No. Uh, but we, it's, it's, it's interesting because we're kind of thinking can parts of what we do, including parent visitation, um, you know, could we be subcontract because we're doing kind of their work? Um, but the complexity of doing that is really tough and, you know, we're are, not always on the same page, but we do a lot of work that backs them. Are a lot of foster parents <clears throat> also CASA volunteers? Uh, no, because that would be a conflict. Where's the conflict? So uh, CASAs are dedicated to the best interest of that child. So that CASA volunteer might think that um, oh, reunification is the best uh, place for that. You know, we need to beef up the household support, get parents um, working on their Do you deal, plans. does CASA deal with the foster care system in, a, in an organizational way, if that makes sense? No, we're kind of a neutral body focused on the best interest of the child. So we support the foster care system, and there there needs to be more foster homes out there. So anything we could do to kind of support the ava availability of foster homes, we're all about it. And who runs the foster care program? Is that a DHHR thing? Is that uh, a there's various nonprofits that uh, recruit and train foster families. Bethany, um, there's a few others in the community. There's the need is great. Uh, Casa has 
at least my exposure to it for the last 20, 20 years or so, uh, has, uh, uh, has been marked, I think, by your growth and your visibility. Uh, you work very hard in getting your message and your need out to the public. And, I, and from the numbers you gave a second ago, that's paid off. People yeah. are very conscious of, of CASA. And the need is not decreasing. The no. need is increasing more and more. So. Yeah, well, thank you, and thanks for having me and being a host to me all the time. So this really does help. And, yeah, it's kind of frustrating just because we have had all this growth, but the number of kids in foster care have uh, grown at a faster pace. So we're still at 50. We were at 50 then. We're at 50, 50 now. Yeah. You know. And how can Freedoms Run help, Corinne? Um, I mean, come on out, sign up, and then we're really encouraging our participants to also sign up for the Superhero Challenge as well. And where do you sign up for these? Um, so Freedoms Run, you can go to freedomsrun.org and click on register, and that would be where you register for the race itself. And then you can also then separately go to the CASA website and click on their Superhero Challenge link there and sign up for the Superhero Challenge, which is a different um, participation fee, but as Michelle said, it all goes back to the organization of CASA. And Freedom's Run is this Saturday? It is this Saturday. What time? Um, so the half marathon goes off at 8.30 in Shepherdstown, and then uh, races just start all the way through 9, and then the marathon starts at 7.30 over in Harpers Ferry. Is the uh, route all in West Virginia? Yes. So no, Maryland, too. Sorry. You go across the bridge into Maryland? <laughs> yes, yes. You, you run down to Harper's Ferry where the road's closed and then turn around and come back? So the marathon goes um, through uh, Lower Town and then it crosses over the river and goes um, on the CNO mm -hmm. all the way oh, down. That's lovely. Yeah, up and then goes and does a loop in Antietam Battlefield mm -hmm. and comes back into Shepherdstown and finishes in Shepherdstown. Uh, via the CNO and then up to Shepherd University. That's very scenic, John. You should bring your golf cart and your donut and coffee and follow <laughs> there along. With the, there you go. With the runners there, I think that would be quite nice. Now, uh, we've been hearing a lot about the road closure at 340. Are you benefiting from that? Um, I would say it actually makes it a little bit more logistically yeah. tricky, mm -hmm. just because you know our marathoners often um, park over in Harper's Ferry, so now they're going to have to make sure to park over in Shepherdstown and take the shuttle, which is a little stressful for people right before they run 26.2 mm -hmm. miles um, and 26.2 tough miles. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of information going out this week just to ensure that our participants understand the logistical changes that are going to have to take place this year now do you have to have get access from the uh, park service to run on cno canal yes okay. yes as well as antietam battlefield yeah, yeah. and harpers mm -hmm. ferry yeah. are you a runner corinne yes i am do you do marathons i've never done a marathon are, i've done a half marathon are you which what are you doing one this week um not this week no no logistically it would be tough to run and, you know, and be in charge kind of, of things. Yep. Yep, work with our volunteers. Maybe you could ride around the cart with Gilstrap. There you go. I might I might take you up on that. Right. Free donuts and coffee. I'll, I'll, I'll have a kale donut for you. <laughs> no, I actually I actually love my regular donuts just what fine. A, what a horrible thought. A kale donut. <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking about that for a moment here. But we have carrot cake, right? Yes, carrot yes, cake and kale donuts. Disguised in a lot of different ways. Sometimes there's a coconut cake. Yeah. That's, that's right. So uh, thanks to you both for coming in. Uh, final thoughts? the mics are yours uh, Michelle we'll start with you yeah great well please sign up for superhero anyone could do it uh, www.mycasaep.org it's a great community builder and the funds really help us grow and serve more kids and Corinne and come on out to Freedom's Run and also sign up for a superhero yeah. challenge via CASA. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, and we love celebrating our community and the historic nature of our community and um, just getting everyone out running. And Michelle, when's the next training uh, program for CASA volunteers? Um, we are underway right now, and we'll have one more before the end of the year. And uh, right now, this last training is going to be a combination of virtual and in person, and we're really customizing it to the group of applicants. So sign up, find out more about what it takes to be a volunteer, come in and meet with our volunteer supervisors. And training is fun. The group of volunteers are great people, and it would be an awesome experience for the right person. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. You guys Thank have you. a great day. Thanks, ladies. At 